Greetings, I'm Jack Hathaway, your town administrator. Welcome to Conversation Corner. I'm joined uh, unusually this, this month by Jim Lehan. Uh, Jim is a member of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, congratulations on your re-election. I can no longer call you the chair. I guess I can call you the chairman for one more day, I think, technically. So, technically, yeah. Uh, welcome back. Uh, it's good to have you here again. Thank you, Jack. So we're, uh, we're at the end of May of 2016. Uh, we've got a beautiful day outside and uh, I know we had a number of things including uh, kind of wrapping up town meeting and some updates on some projects going on. Um, so we'll, we'll get right to it. Uh, so we had town meeting beginning of May and uh, it actually uh, one of the easier, uh, you know, I don't mean that uh, in a bad way, but uh, it was a simple town meeting, uh, 25 articles I think we had. 20, 28, 29 articles, yeah. Yeah. And, it was uh, a light lift compared about, to most spring meetings. Yeah. About 26 of them went uh, without uh, too much debate, so uh, a couple debates on a few things, but uh, the budget went relatively smoothly, mm -hmm. uh, good participation from, from all the departments and the schools and uh, the, of course the advisory committee and the selectmen, um, so I think we were relative actually I think town meeting voted unanim unanimously on the budget which they did and um, I would encourage people that when we go through this process for spring meeting um, the advisory board is really where you mm -hmm. get the detail and the information on not just the budget but a lot of the other issues associated with spring meeting so I know they're ca I know they're taped and I think in most cases broadcast live so I hope folks do watch it because that's where you really get into the level of detail each department comes in presents what they're looking to do um, the Board of Selectmen, along with uh, you, Jack, you mostly uh, present the budget to the advisory board, and uh, it's it's a good opportunity for folks to really understand what's going on, and uh, I think it helps get us through town meeting a little bit more smoothly because that's a tough place to get into a level of detail. Yeah, it is. Um, it does get, and when you start, <clears throat> not only that, but then when you start trying to move money around, uh, yeah. you know, it's like doing zoning on the on the fly. You, you don't really want to be doing budgeting on the fly. No, um, you do not. We, we've had a few years where that's occurred and uh, it, it can cause a whole lot of problems. Mm. Yeah. Well, so I appreciate, it, appreciate the people that were there. It was, uh, definitely. Was I, it? About 200 people I think. Yeah. Pretty close to that. So it was a reasonable turnout. Love to see more. Yep. I remember days when we had 800 or 1,000 people. I remember one meeting we had rollovers into the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, usually there's something of significant interest. Yeah. <laughs> like building a $30 million school or things of that nature that draw people for that type of agenda. But um, we were grateful for the people that were there. Thank you. Yeah. And so it looks like CPC is going to buy some land on half of the town uh, down on Main Street, which is a nice piece of land, $230,000 or so. Uh, 237 I think, yeah. 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 Um, so the, I think it's, uh, and you know, I've been critical at times of our purchases, and, uh, and this, this time uh, I think we've all questioned uh, different purchases. Uh, Actually, I think this one was unanimous as well. It, it was. Uh, um, you and I walked the land. It's a beautiful piece of land. Yeah. We already own the pond, and, and it's, uh, I think will be very beneficial to the town. Um, uh, I, I don't, just to kind of rephrase what you were saying, I don't think it's that we were so much critical. I think one of the things that we're not good at collectively um, mm -hmm. is, is we, we're good at identifying it. We're good about bringing open space into the coffers, if you will, but then we kind of forget it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we need to actively work on developing um, trails and, and making more people aware of the, of the sites. The Weber property, I don't even think folks know we own mm. those 22 acres of land behind Jane and Paul's farm. Um, mm. So we need to do a better job of that. And I say that collectively. We're, we own it as much as everybody else. Um, yeah. But we do own some beautiful pieces of land. Yeah, well, I think this is a, this yeah. is a particularly good one, but, uh, particularly for the the bargain price. I think we paid. So it was, it was a bargain it was a good price. Deal. I think it was about half of what he was asking. Yeah. So, um, and we don't need to get in today. But you you reminded me, Jane and Paul's. I'm I'm not I'm I don't think they're opening up this year. So 
Oh, don't tell me that. Uh, it's, it doesn't look good when, when you drive by them on Fruit Street. So. Uh, well, I noticed there's a closed sign in front of the driveway, uh, but um, I hadn't heard that. Oh, I hadn't heard oh, it either. I just, don't say that. Uh, well, oh. I'm, I'm begging you, Jane and Paul, please yeah. open. I need my, I need my corn. And, oh, uh, Lord. And, and you are They're an institution in this town. Oh, I, I hope all is well. Yeah. Um, so we wanted to talk about our public safety projects, uh, the two, three really, uh, the regional dispatch. Um, that is our regional dispatch center that we're doing with Rentham, Plainville, and Franklin. Uh, we're still going forward with that. We've applied for uh, uh, the next phase of the grant uh, that was recently done, uh, another $3.1 million that we've applied for. Hopefully the state will, will approve. And, uh, <clears throat> but regardless, we're moving forward. Um, we're looking to construct that uh, at the same time that we do the construction of the, you know, the build out of the police station. So that will happen over the next uh, 18 months, uh, hopefully be fully constructed by November of 2017. So that project is going well. Uh, we have money in our, from the state to hire an executive director, uh, which we will probably do in the December, January timeframe. And that person will help just kind of get us to the finish line, uh, you know, putting together policies and working on the union negotiations and all those types of things that uh, that mm -hmm. entity will have to take over. Um, so that's going forward. Uh, I, I know we've got the police you know, project as one well. One comment on the um, regional dispatch center. I don't know if you noticed it, but in the last week um, on the morning news, there was an incident mm. in a town that shall remain nameless um, about um, a crisis situation where the uh, individual dialed 911 um, couldn't get an answer the first time, then got a busy signal, uh, couldn't get an answer the second time, and it took them something like 10 to 12 minutes to get through on the 911 call. And uh, it, after they gave that small blurb, they talked, to, they talked with some of the officials from the state, and the state talked about the issue with 911 call centers and how they are trying desperately to encourage the towns to regionalize this capability, and they're just butting heads with all the towns. The towns mm -hmm. just don't want to do it. Um, and they went on and on about how it would, this type of issue would have never happened had they had a regional dispatch center. And of course, we're sitting there listening to that and saying, hmm, it's yeah. nice to be at the front end of the curve. Um, but it, it, it's an unfortunate incident that, oh, yeah. that happened. But uh, when you have limited staff, limited capabilities, and you can get a little overwhelmed, and this regional dispatch center cre creates that type of redundancy um, that will prevent something like that from happening. So it really is a good thing. And when it you is. see something like that, it really comes home. Uh, thank you. I mean, it's 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 really uh, the, the reality is when you know we have one dispatcher working at a time. Yep. Um, th that person can he or she can get uh, overwhelmed very quickly if there's mm -hmm. a lot of activity going on and. Uh, you know, fortunately, in most cases, we have a police officer in the building who, who will literally step in and uh, just start picking up, you know, extra phones as they're, as they're ringing. But uh, it, that's not the environment that you want to be in, is, is hoping that there's a police officer there. You want to be in an environment where there's, you know, two, three, and four yeah. dispatchers all working together and then have an overflow to the, to the regional dispatch center uh, mm -hmm. down the road 20 miles. Yep. Um, it, it isn't about money, although I think over time I'm one that believes it will save us I some agree, funds, 100%, uh, yep. but it, it's really about the redundancy and capability. Mm -hmm. And um, seeing that news article, I hope others saw it as well. Uh, this really is a good thing, and it took four years uh, with you at the lead for our town uh, to work through this. And yeah. you know the, the political haggling, if you will. Um, some of the selectmen and some of the other towns were were not as supportive as we had hoped they would have been, and it took a lot of time. So I know towns are turfy and proprietary, but these kinds of things, public safety, it doesn't take a second seat to anything. And uh, uh, we're, we're we're past the point of talking about it. It's it's here. Yeah. And, and it's under construction, and and we're thrilled. This is really a win. Can't wait to cut the ribbon on that. I building. can't either. It'll be nice. Yeah. Um, and so we know we actually have a public safety building project yep. meeting uh, in a couple of hours. So that we do. Yeah, the police station is um, we're we're well under the way of the design phases. Um, had some interesting discussions. Uh, yep. I think today we're going to try and finalize on uh, the heating and cooling systems, if you will. But uh, we're hoping. I think the drawings are supposed to go out in August. Mm -hmm. The bid in August. Um, Thirty days, forty-five days for them to come back in. And uh, we should get underway in the fall. The, the, the shell of the building is there, so we, we don't have the winter issues to deal with where we can start working on the inside right away. And I think that's slated to open the following summer. 
I yeah, probably be uh, constructed in the summer and then, then all moved in and, uh, you know, all the bugs worked out and so move in in the fall. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll be great. I can't yep. wait. And, and then we start the, the fire station. Yep. As soon as we turn over and start construction on the, on the police station, then we go to design on the fire department and mm -hmm. kind of work uh, just a little bit of a lag there. But uh, yeah, not a lot. All, all of this should be done, I think, the time frame is the fall of 2018. Correct. I think yep. both buildings will be operational. And a thank you again to the voters. This is, Absolutely. Right. This is a big deal for us. It's nice. You know, every once in a while I get, a, I get an email or something from, from somebody who, you know, either starts with, uh, I was in favor of, or, you know, and I'm glad I was, or I wasn't in favor, but now I am. Uh, people who have mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately had some experience with public safety and, uh, you know, appreciate uh, when you really see it firsthand how much work our public safety officials do. Um, whether it's on the police side or the fire side, usually they're in tandem when, when the residents yeah. are, are experiencing them. Uh, you know, they really do appreciate how much work they do. And 99% and of the time you don't see that because you don't need their services. But, but, the, eight, the, but the 800 calls they make every year yeah. <laughs> are meaningful. And um, uh, we should probably call it not the fire department, but the rescue department. Mm. Uh, and because uh, fortunately we don't have a lot of fires. Uh, Although uh, we did have an interesting brush fire not too long ago that uh, got a little out of control, which yeah. uh, unfortunately can happen, but uh, the response was good um, and no, no permanent damage done, so we were fortunate. Yep. Yeah, that's true. I, yeah, we were both there for that yeah. <laughs> 12 or 14 acres of, of yeah. brush fire, which And it was pretty, pretty, pretty scary. extensive. Yeah. Yeah. Next thing I had on my list was a little road work going on. We, yes, yeah. Um, Bob McGee, I think, does a phenomenal job. Uh, he maximizes the dollars available. Um, we get Chapter 90 money from the state every year. I think we got close to $400,000 this year, and we had 150, 160,000 left over from last year. So we got five and change, I think, somewhere mm -hmm. in that range. Uh, he really gets every bang for the dollar. Um, does a lot of work. He's working on 115, uh, a couple of neighborhoods. Um, he's doing the sidewalk along 115 up near the center of town, which is really dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, he, he's going to have a busy summer. Yep, he busy is. Busy summer. And yeah, we're doing some work on King Street, I think, today, and yep. then uh, over on Everett Street. Speed uh, bumps. Speed humps, humps. Or, or possibly speed, lumps. If, uh, speed lumps. <laughs> but yes. hopefully uh, something that we've, that's been an ongoing battle to, to try and slow traffic down. It's a cut through for Patriots games, yeah. and um, it's been an ongoing battle to slow that traffic down. And so hopefully this will help. We could talk. We could spend some time talking about the difference between speed bumps, humps, and lumps. We, you, we've learned a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting topic. <laughs> yeah, we have. Uh, so I, I do. I, I agree with you 100. percent I appreciate what Bob has been doing and uh, and stretching the dollar uh, that he and his guys do. They do a they do a great job, and I uh, appreciate that very much. So. So we got some challenges coming up in 2000. We do. It seems like every year there's um, something new that kind of hits us that we've got to work on. But yeah. um, we've got a couple of major challenges in front of us. One that really we own as a board, and, and one that we're just sort of on the sidelines, but hopefully can provide some influence and support for. But uh, we'll start with developments. We we have um, a lot going on. Mm -hmm. um, Norfolk has become a very attractive town for people to want to uh, develop not only individual homes, but larger, uh, larger uh, projects. Projects, thank yeah. you. Uh, and we've got quite a few of them in front of us. Um, I remember a town meeting, maybe four years ago, where yeah. we were uh, we were talking about uh, the devil you know is better than the devil you don't, and and um, be aware because the, the, you know we we felt we were a prime target for 40B development, even though we've made substantial gains on our affordable housing stock, uh, we're still not where we need to be. Right. And um, lo and behold, they're here, alive and well. I think we've got four now. Um, we have one on the hill that's here yeah. that, that uh, people may not even know that oh, the right. condo's up on the hill is a 40B. Uh, but we've got three other projects that are before us now at this time. And uh, they don't go to the normal process. They go through the ZBA. Um, 40B projects are projects that basically circumvent a lot of our zoning. And most importantly, I think, is that increased density, that they can put more on a smaller piece of land, uh, but 25% of them have to be affordable units. And, and affordable units are not Section 8 units. Now, you, you have to be able to buy them, you have to be own them, you have to own them, uh, you have to have the credit to own them. They're, they're not, some people think of them as Section 8 and they're not. Um, and that's a good thing because we need the affordable units, but we have to manage this growth very, very carefully. 
uh, as best we can. Yeah, and then unfortunately, uh, you know, you read the comments on Facebook, et cetera. Unfortunately, we don't have the, the power to, you know, we try to manage it as you say, we, the best yeah. we can, but, but once somebody gets their eyes uh, and, their, and their grips on a piece of property, um, we have to work with them, but we can't, we, we can't necessarily stop them. Um, uh, you until, can't stop them. Right. Uh, I mean, you know, it's always, you know, people don't want things built next door or behind right. them, and it's normal. I think yeah. we all probably share that feeling, but if people own the land and they follow our zoning and they follow the rules, they have a right to develop it. Right, or they follow Chapter 40B. Or, or, yeah. Yeah. or Chapter 40B. And um, so um, we, we can hopefully influence it. There's what's commonly known as friendly and unfriendly. Friendly yeah. is when we mutually agree, <laughs> and unfriendly is when they want to put something in that we don't really like. Yeah. Um, and uh, the, these are going to be some significant challenges for us. Yeah, the one, the 106, 108 Main Street, uh, certainly uh, up to this point, and I don't have any expectation that it's going to change, has been friendly. Yep. Um, it's uh, 40 units, 40 units, I believe, 40 or 44. 44, I think yeah, it's 44, 44 units. units. Yeah. Uh, Upper end, nice, nice units, uh, solar, I yeah. believe, all solar, uh, nice landscaping. It, it certainly has all the appearances of being a nice project. I, and I think, uh, yeah, the, the market rate units, I think he's got a waiting list. Uh, I, I know of several people, one, one good friend that's planning on uh, selling the quote-unquote big house and moving into the yeah. condo. So um, it it's, appears to be a very attractive development. We've got a couple of others that may not, uh, we need a little bit more work on. We've got the one on Cleveland Street that uh, a lot of press has been, yep. you know, social media has been talking about and uh, that one's a challenge and uh, I guess you would, you would typically call that one an unfriendly to this point anyway and, mm -hmm. and maybe we can swing that pendulum so that it becomes a friendly 40b um, but it looks the density there is is he's talking about 40 units uh, on a piece of property and uh, we hope that uh, through the zoning board process that, that we can come to something that the town feels is uh, more more suitable for that uh, that area but yeah I would encourage people to watch the ZBA meeting uh, that last public yeah. hearing um, uh, it, it's It'll be very informative, and um, it is sort of a classic example of what can turn into an unfriendly kind of environment. Yeah. He, he's trying to force through a project that I think most of us would find unacceptable to the mm -hmm. town, um, and we're, we're trying our best to uh, mitigate that. And, and you know, the ZBA is bringing in some help. You know, we're all volunteers on these boards, and sometimes we don't have the level of expertise we'd like to have. So I know the ZBA has brought in some. Uh, consultants and council, and uh, I even think they're involving some of the planning board members because they have a level of expertise. The ZBA is generally sort of a judiciary board, you know, it's a yay or nay kind of board. Mm -hmm. They don't get into the type of things that the planning board gets into, and um, I, I applaud them for, for bringing in the help. Uh, you know, this isn't yeah. about turf, this is about getting it right, <clears throat> and um, that they're doing it the best they can, but hopefully that attitude will change and it will become a little bit more friendly. We yeah. hope. You know, it's funny that you say that. We've, we've gone we evolved, and I think it's uh, it's been an interesting development over the past ten years. I'll say. Uh, I remember a time when we had a chairman's meeting, and uh, mm -hmm. we sat around the table. I had to introduce people. Um, yeah. ZBA didn't know planning board and and Concom, and uh, boy, we've come we've we've come a long we, way. We sure have. Time. I'm glad you brought that up because um, it, it, I think. 12 years ago, it seems like yesterday, uh, when I got on the board, it, we, we were islands. Yeah. We were literally pockets of business units that never spoke to each other. And um, it was a shame because uh, things just, one, didn't get done, uh, mm. or if they did get done, they got done somewhat in a haphazard manner without any coordination between the other boards. And uh, everything pretty much that goes on in town government requires a collective effort. I mean, it, it, it's not usually just touching one entity. Oh, yeah. It touches multiple entities. I mean, every development touches Board of Health, it touches Planning Board, may even touch Board of Selectmen on certain occasions. You don't know. Mm. Um, and you're right, I remember that meeting, and, and it was uh, strange. I, I was yeah. shocked. I was like, you, yeah. get, you guys don't know each other? <laughs> and, uh, and a lot thanks to NCTV, because they broadcast all the shows now yeah. live, so those of us that can't get to all the meetings can at least watch and be current on what's going on, but there's much better communication oh, yeah, between but, the boards yeah. now. Yeah, We work well together. Yeah, it's a little bit, you know, all a collective effort, but uh, give credit to the people who are on the boards now who, who yeah. take the time to reach out to each other and, uh, you know, they've they know each other. Um, yeah, uh, it's it's. I mean, I have coffee pretty much every Friday with a couple of chairs. Yeah. And, uh, not every Friday, but we, we try to, and uh, just just to catch up, see what you know how we can help each other. But yeah, it's really changed to the better. Mm. Yeah. 
That is a good thing. Um, I don't know, we don't have to go into great detail, but we've got uh, a couple other big projects uh, that are still hanging out in the background there. Uh, down on Lawrence Street, uh, we've got that project, and the developer is working with uh, a number of uh, town officials to try and come up with a plan that uh, will work for all of us. Uh, we'll see, you know, we're, we're, we're hopeful that that'll continue in a positive light. It certainly has yeah. taken a good good approach the last couple of weeks, so that's been great. Uh, it's a good example of um, uh, how the boards got together at the initial stages and talked with the developer who seemed a little bit in a hurry yeah. to, to kind of move forward with a project that we didn't particularly think was suitable. And um, we had a meeting um, and with a bunch of different representatives from the different boards and, and from that meeting has come up a much more cooperative effort yeah. and, and we thank the developer for that as well as the board members that participated in that because they're having good discussions now and getting the project down in a way that it might work better. So that's, that's an example of how you can turn it around. Yeah, so knock on wood, so far so good. Yeah. And that one and then the other project that uh, people certainly have heard about for the last couple of years is Southwood, uh, continues to move forward. Uh, I know that, that the zoning group, the working group has uh, kind of presented a list of, of requests that would like the, the developer to work on and he's working on those and uh, as soon as he's finishes doing some, you know, putting together some plans and do some other things that the, the group wants to see, then we'll get together again and uh, possibly have a, a zoning article for the Springtown meeting. But we'll, we'll, or fall, potentially. We'll see yeah. however that... How fast oh, I'm works. sorry, fall, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I skipped my, yeah, wasn't my it intent. It might be the spring, you might be right. No, well, <laughs> well that wasn't my intent. I, I forgot yeah, that no. we already had Springtown meeting, yeah. so... That, that project, I think that's been going on now for three years, um, but it, it's a complicated project. It, it is a very complex project. It involves three different entities, the town, the developer, and the archdiocese yeah. uh, with some hazard waste issues. It's, it's complicated. And, um, yeah, and even more so, he's, I mean, the developer really is kind of a, he's, he's a project manager, I would say. He's and, a middleman. And he's bringing in developers to f do the different right. components, so he's, you know, he's got He's got a little bit of negotiations here, and then he's got you know probably five times that many negotiations yeah. off in the background. So, but th this is an example about um, where the town does hold the card uh, yeah. because he needs a zoning change to make this work. So um, uh, he's agreed to a number of things, like the, the condominiums will be restricted age, so it doesn't impact the schools. Uh, we still have some issues around some potential apartments uh, and some issues around uh, what will be affordable and non-affordable components yeah. to assisted living. Uh, on the surface, it's, it's an attractive project, uh, certainly financially to the town. Uh, it's in an area that somebody's going to develop sooner or later. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the archdiocese is very anxious to sell it. They're anxious to get it off their books. So if it isn't this gentleman, it's going to be someone else. So it's another example of sort of the devil you know is the devil better than the one mm -hmm. you don't. Um, so we've really made an effort to work with them, but we, we want the loose ends tied down on this. Because um, once you change zoning, your leverage is gone. Right. So we, we want this to be as pretty much ironclad as we can make it, and it's taking time. Yeah. No, I, I think we're, it's a big step, and whenever you take a big step like that, it's, you get a little nervous. Uh, yeah. So. You, like you said, you want to make sure every I is dotted and T is crossed. Um, so I think that's most of the big things we want to talk about. Well, we, you know, we, we have a couple of other things that are facing us. We uh, uh, are constantly in search of new water sources. Mm-hmm. Um, I know Bob has uh, four or five, I think, different test sites mm -hmm. over the last year. One has some optimistic, out actually a couple. Have, yeah, two, some, I think. Yeah, yeah. Two that, that look potentially to be good sources. Um, um, we need another well source, yeah. and we need it in a reasonable period of time, because yep. uh, it takes two, three, potentially four years to get them permitted. Um, so we're, we're actively working on that. It's a priority. It's a priority for Bob. We've dedicated some funds to it. Um, so, but yeah. it, it's a need. And we're working on our, uh, right right this week, actually, we're working on our Spruce Road uh, well that's uh, doing its annual maintenance. And, uh, you know, that one we've been talking about has, has come under pressure, if you will, um, because it's been the minerals, uh, as you use these wells, the minerals, you know, the soot, et cetera, tends to come in and get come in and get closer. Think of it as hardening of the arteries. Yeah, that's a good way of saying it, and uh, especially for somebody my age. Um, so that's uh, that's been happening. So we're going through our annual maintenance to clean out those arteries and uh, and 
so we, while we're down, we, we're using some water from Rentham, which we, mm -hmm. we budget for, so it's not an emergency or anything. But, uh, but we are going to send out a message to everybody to, to remind them of the rules and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, no, uh, uh, you know, follow the, the water department uh, rules that are set by the DEP for, for water usage. Uh, you know, the biggest one, obviously, is, you know, swimming pools and, and irrigation systems. If, uh, if you have a town, if you have a... If you don't have a well and you're using an irrigation system, uh, you're 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 not following the bylaws. Um, so uh, we just need people to to, to work with us on that. Um, so yeah, so he's continuing to work forward to that. I know he'll come to the Bob will come to the selectmen in a, in another couple of weeks and uh, give us an update, and uh, hopefully we'll have a, a clear plan uh, pretty soon about where we can. Yeah. Um, go forward. It, it, you know, it's, a, it's been an educational process for me because I didn't know a whole lot about water departments uh, until the last 12 years. Um, I know one of the things that's very frustrating to folks is Kingsbury Pond. Mm. Um, and unfortunately, you know, there's nothing on our side of the equation that we can do about it. Uh, Franklin has, I think, five wells. They have a, quite a few. I think, I, it's, I either, think, I think yeah, it's at least five. Yeah. At least five wells in that area. Um, we believe that it's impacted the pond. Um, yep. They don't, yep. uh, but we do. Um, but we, we can't stop them, and it's frustrating. Although I understand that the main well is coming up for permitting in the uh, near future. Well, DEP certainly has been notified that uh, yeah. it's an issue. And, and DEP is the only one that can step in on this. Yeah. Um, I wish they would because yeah. it, it, it clearly has an impact on that, and it's a shame. Shame for the people that live next to it to, to lose that tremendous resource. It is amazing. So um, hopefully DEP will take some action on that. I know we've tried at the local level, but that hasn't had. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I appreciate uh, Representative Dooley has yep. uh, coordinated um, some meetings on that, so it's been helped bring it to bring it to the top of the line or yep. bring it to attention. Uh, last thing I had was just to remind people that. Uh, Obviously, Memorial Day is coming up, and if you haven't uh, participated in the Memorial Day parade, uh, come join us on at 8 a.m. on Memorial Day. We leave from the Public Safety Building. Obviously, the the the, the important people there are the veterans and uh, and some other folks honoring the veterans. Uh, we go from the Public Safety Building down to the cemetery, where we have probably 20 minutes or so of speeches um, from the veterans. Uh, Representative Dooley, Senator Ross, uh, Chairman Palumbo from the Board of Selectmen will speak this year. And then we march back to uh, Town Hill and have a, another uh, 21 gun salute. Mm -hmm. And then we're, we go to the uh, Federated Church parking lot for uh, ice cream, donuts, and lemonade. And cheese. Don't forget and the cheese. cheese. Don't forget yeah. the cheese. Uh, but I hope people will come. It's a wonderful tradition. It is. I, I hope we never lose it. The King Philip Band is here. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, they're outstanding, and I hope it's something that we always hang on to because it's it's old town America, and it's it's wonderful to see. And Girl Scouts and will decorate the graves. Uh, yeah. Play taps. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's a very it's a moving it's a moving ceremony and uh, a great tradition. Some Freeman Kennedy students will do the uh, Gettysburg, Gettysburg address. Gettysburg address, yeah. Yeah, and there'll nice. be a um, and the schools uh, just uh, the Memorial Day there'll be a Memorial Day service at the. Uh, uh, I guess it's at the Freeman Kennedy School. I, I, I look forward to attending that every year. It's just a, they do a wonderful job of reminding people, of reminding the kids. Mm. Um, of course, the school is named after Adam Kennedy. Um, I remember that day vividly because uh, mm. my daughter lived, one of my daughters lived right across the street from Dave and Nancy. And the caisson, the wagon that, that mm. had Adam's um, uh, casket that was brought home uh, started at their house and um, it was a rainy dreary day and I remember uh, my wife and I walked up to my daughter's house and my daughter and her three little kids um, all of whom have been now through that HOD school not HOD uh, the, uh, Freeman Kennedy um, watching the case on I'm not sure they understood at that mm -hmm. young age what was going on they do now because the school reinforces it on a constant basis that, that we need to say thank you and honor uh, the memory and uh, I also remember there were, had to be a thousand people lining the center of town uh, to honor Adam, and probably 95% of them never knew him no, and I, didn't know the family. Yeah. Um, but that's what you do. 
and uh, it, was, it was a sad but proud day. Absolutely, I, I mm. remember that, uh, I want to say Easter, Easter 2007. Mm -hmm. um, yep. I, I, know, I know it was I know it was Easter, unfortunately, yeah. but uh, and I remember that and uh, and planning for that ceremony and, and the how impressed I was with the military and the state police uh, and local officers who all came together mm -hmm. and, and helped plan that. Um, hopefully, we won't have to do it again. No, hopefully not. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and we've got the flags down today for the Auburn police officer. So it's. Uh, I know what a tragedy. These things don't stop. Um, hopefully, they will. So, anyway, I uh, hope people will be able to join us on Memorial Day and uh, as, we, as we remember these folks, um, such as Adam Kennedy, and the service they provided to our country. And uh, again, 8 a.m., I uh, encourage you to, be, to join us, either meet us at the cemetery or, or walk along with us uh, on the parade route just down mm -hmm. Main Street. So, as you said, it's a, it's a really uh, fabulous day. Um, rain or shine. Rain or shine. Yep. <laughs> Hopefully this year will be shine. But Hopefully. All right. Well, I think that's it. I appreciate uh, appreciate you being here. Thanks, Jack. Mr. Lee. Always a pleasure. And uh, join us uh, next month for Conversation Corner. But uh, I hope everybody has a great Memorial Day. Uh, if we see you or if you can't join us, again, I hope you have a great day, and uh, we'll see you next month. Take care.